Hello everybody once again on part two of Ninja's Quote with David Brayshaw. He's the one I am Paco Garcia, your host. Welcome to GMS Magazine videos. In the previous video, we took a look at how I knew absolutely nothing about the game, including when it was released, and also took a look at the contents of the box, which is a good thing to do when one does uh, the first unboxing I do in front of the publisher mm. of a book. But right or now, game. or again, or, or again, yeah. <laughs> However, what we're going to do now is to actually show you how this game is played because this is my channel and I do whatever I like. So let's play. Going on a more serious matter, though, it is uh, not very often that people can actually learn how to play the game from the designer itself. Although, yeah, David is not the original designer because this game was designed by yeah. whom? Yeah, yeah, girl. That's why I couldn't know how to pronounce that. But you have done an awful lot of work on the rules. You have yeah. designed your rules. You have polished the whole thing. And let's face it, it's not very often that we get the chance of learning how to play a game straight from the wolf's mouth and that's exactly what we're going to do right? okay let's call you a wolf Arr. that's good so um tell me a little bit how is the game set up to play because right now we have in here as people might or might not be able to see yeah we have some decks of cards we have the minis we have the meeples we have the boards mm. and uh now what well the idea of the game is that there's an evil shogun in Amori in Japan, mm -hmm. and you have been tasked a bit like the Magnificent Seven to get rid of this dictator who's causing misery to the people in the village or, mm -hmm. or the town. Okay. And you band together with your ninja friends and you try to sneak across the rooftops in the evening, mm -hmm. avoiding guards and lights, mm -hmm. possibly picking up treasure along the way. And if you can get to the top of the shogun's palace and do the dirty deed, if you like, um, before a time tracker goes, mm -hmm. it's a cooperative mechanism then you've succeeded in what you could describe as part one of the game. Now, it doesn't have to be part one, because okay. on the flip side of the board, there is the player versus player game. Okay. So you could decide, I'm not really a cooperative player, I'd like to play the player versus player game, so you could start then. But in terms of the story, it's probably easier to learn the mechanic mm -hmm. and what happens and how you play on the cooperative side of the game, because no one's trying to sort of screw you over at the start and you're learning together and helping together. Okay. So that's fine. Okay. That's also the same mechanic in the, the speed version of the game. But then obviously you have a time device, stopwatch okay. running. So if you don't really know what you're doing, you have a stopwatch running. It's not really much fun. Okay, fine. So you need to learn the rules before you actually go into the more advanced things. And the co-op is the easiest way to learn it. Fair enough. How do we set this game up? Um, well, basically you set up the city or the town in order of the boards. So the boards are actually numbered here, one to seven. So we can put them up in a nice straight line. You can do that, four, five, mm -hmm. six, seven. They're gonna go off the table, but the Shogun's house is on the last one there. Okay. And as you can see, they're numbered. So it's pretty easy to start off with. Now, the time tracker up on this side of the board yep. um, is not interchangeable on the cooperative side of the board, obviously because you've got to play up time tracker boards and you've got various targets there for two players, three players and four players. Okay. However, boards two, mm -hmm. sorry, two to four yep. are interchangeable. And if you look at boards two to four, there's like only one treasure on board two, mm -hmm. whereas there's four on the other two. So they are interchangeable. So you could decide to maybe make the game a little bit easier by moving, you know, boards two or three and four back down one and moving the harder board up there. Okay. Or vice versa. Okay. So there's a little bit of interchange variety there. And then what you do is you set up your little lamps mm -hmm. on the lamp tiles. So the ones with the little lights get a clear crystal cube okay. to, One sh to show that it looks like a little light turned on. And the little um, red cubes, I know they're green on the board, but this is to do with um, not confusing it for the certain cards you draw from one part of the game and the other. Because okay. the cards we draw, again, we bearing in mind the whole colorblind idea that we have to try and accommodate people who are you know, colorblind or have color difficulties. Yep. 
the player the cards for one side of the board are slightly different from the other so we have cards that are red green and purple okay so again these little red cubes will go on where the green uh little tiles are on this side of the board mm -hmm. so that's like that. and that's pretty much how the lamps and the treasure look well this will give you a few this more to do up there yes, there's quite a few actually i thank you okay. um you need one, two, three, four. Yep. I presume they come with the right number of... Um, yep, yep. So things. after you do that, you would really set up the guards because no shogun is going to be unprotected. So again, the black maples go on the black circles with the guard symbol. And so, so here, here, the, the red maples mm -hmm. will go on where the red guard symbols are. Okay. And the difference between those, if you look at the board, is they have little arrows. Yep. Which mean these guards actually patrol. So they will move during the game to try and, you know, interact with the, the ninja and stop them from getting to, to kill the shogun or whatever at the end. Okay. So we have another treasure there to go and a couple of guards, I think. Thank you. And see the moving, two moving guards in front of the shogun's palace. These are the lazy ones because they don't move a lot, do they? They just they don't. Have, they only have to block the yeah. front of the palace, which is which is the most important thing, obviously, in the end game. I know. So the he, the, the shogun chooses the laziest guard to. Yeah. Show them that they, whatever. <laughs> Never mind. So it keeps them close. Let's just say <laughs> yes. it keeps them close. So the next thing is, what you do with your movement cards is you shuffle the movement cards and mm -hmm. you give a deck of twelve movement cards to each player. Okay. You also give a deck of 12 movement cards to the imaginary players. Okay, that's all for our imaginary friends. Okay, good, I like that. So we pretend there's always four players when it comes to the cards. And okay. the reason for that is that after six rounds, yep. you put together the cards in your hand, you give them to your opponent, mm -hmm. or you're not your opponent, your the companion next player, case, yeah. companion, and then they pass them um, around the board. So you get a new mix of cards, shuffle them, and then you play the next round. Oh, okay. So in terms of the cooperative side, it's not too important, but again, if one person loses, we all lose. But in terms of the player versus player side, it can be quite helpful or detrimental depending what mix of cards you get. Okay. But obviously then on the draw of a card, you have a choice. So how the game plays basically is you will each pick a little ninja. These little ninja miniatures as we talked about in the earlier video. Yes. So you can pick whoever you want to be. They're pretty much neutral in terms of their abilities. In this level of the game mm -hmm. so would you like to pick a color perhaps or yeah, one purple. With... so you're going to be the purple ninja so this is our starting points which we'll choose to move from and you can choose to move from any of them to sneak into the town and um, just for for the, the fun sake i will be the little konoshi female ninja okay so i will be her and we give out the first player marker <laughs> So in this case, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, thank just you. for badness. Okay. And every player will turn over, just if you move your deck down a bit, and turn mm -hmm. over one of your movement cards with the arrow pointing towards the Shogun's palace. Okay. And oh, look, we've got the same card. I didn't really shuffle them very well. Let's just do this like I did that. Okay. And we didn't see my card at all. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> so on your first turn, you yeah. will get to choose between that card yep. and another card. Okay. So what it would do is turn over another card mm -hmm. on your first turn you can decide what have i got i've got move forward this is where your ninja is the red space yeah. and i go forward one and one left or forward one and one right or i can use a jump action to jump over anything that's immediately in front of me so the jump card is very cool it means you can jump over a one guard or you can jump over a light so that is very very cool the only time it wouldn't be cool is if you wanted to jump over the treasure because then you don't get the treasure okay so in your first action it's very very simple you can either decide to go like this and move and hit one of these guys because that's the only options this card offers you mm -hmm. you're going to hit a guard with it or you're going to hit a light okay the light is the lesser of the two evils or you can be you know sensible i'm going to be and play the jump card so um, you can either jump over that yep or you can jump over that perhaps or you could just move to there. You don't have to actually jump over anything. So it's really up to you, which... Oh. I am actually just, um, pretty much because I can, I'm just going to jump from here to 
here and are actually doing a cartwheel in a side to it. I think that's an interesting movement. It's not the one I would have chosen because the game is strategic. Yeah, but you have played the game and I am yep. absolutely clueless. So I'm just The red cubes on the board are treasure. Uh-huh. You want to be close to treasure. I'm not greedy. <laughs> so if it was me, I would jump there. Well, oh, look. This is a cooperative game, yeah. so I'm going to be very good to you, okay. and I'm going to let you take the Possibly. So what do you do then? The card you played, yes. you set here. Okay, this goes to the this other card. card. No, no, it stays there. That's the played card, okay. and then the discard card goes here. Okay. And you turn over your next card, so you have time to look at it and think about what you do next. Oh, yes, I like But this not one. until your turn. No. But so I again, I repeat the process, because I'm the second player. It comes right round to me. And I've got, oh, look, I've got a jump card, funnily enough. Uh -huh. And I've also got a diagonal and one straight. So diagonal and one straight for me could get me there. Mm, not there, because I can hit both of those. It could get me there, and one straight hit that. That's not so good. Or here. So, and then one. Yeah, so it's probably prudent for me to use the jump card like you did and jump to here, with the hope that I'll get a diagonal card next time and grab the treasure. Okay. So I will do the same action as you. But do you do a cartwheeling as well, or are you just being a sensible ninja? I did a spread eagle. Okay. okay that's... I turn over the next card yep. and place it in front of me. And it turns to you to turn two. Okay, my turn two would be that card. Do I draw another, or another one? card? Yeah. So you always choose between two. So always keep that down a little bit because you're going to build that played cards at the top. Okay. And uh, evidently, I don't want to use the diagonal one. Because if I use like a diagonal, I either fall on these here. Yeah, you can't go off the board with the movement, so that's an action you cannot take. Correct. So, uh, and also I don't want to fall on the light, and I don't want to fall on this fellow. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to move towards the treasure. Yeah. Two stops. Not a prudent idea. In fact, it's probably your best and only choice. So I have used this card. So I put it, it here there. Yeah. on this the side, discard. and this is discarded. Okay, and then and I repeat the process. I draw a second card, which again is sideways and then straight. So I'm going to be bad. I want the treasure. Okay, so I'm going to use this card. Yeah. Because I want the treasure. I'm taking risk and reward. Okay. So I'm going to hit the light with this card. Yep. Sorry, this card. Move into the treasure and then move to here. Okay. So what happens then? I take both of these items and set them on the card. Mm -hmm. They will be resolved after six turns. This one is discarded. Take another card. So I didn't take another card. Yeah, you must take, another, take a card at the start of your turn and a card at the end of your turn. So you always have okay. two to choose from. No, no, they're moved away. Yeah, exactly. So I didn't choose one. So I, I, I take one now. Yep. That's the and one I should have taken before. Yeah. And now at the beginning of my turn, I take, take another one. Yeah. Now, because uh. you've been a terrible human being. <laughs> Taking the treasure. <laughs> uh, you've been really bad. I am going to, ooh, uh, but, however, now you have already fallen onto this light here and you have taken the light yeah. away from me. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So if I go here, does that mean that this light is off? Yes. Yes, because that means that I can take this card yeah. and move it yeah. one side and then two front. Yeah. What you can do is you can pass through the other ninja because we're friends. Okay. But in this case, that's a prudent move anyway. So this card... Because this one would have taken you through the guard. Correct. That's that's why I decided not to do it. Yeah. So I do this and that. At this point, it's worth mentioning that each player starts off with a shuriken. One of these little throwing stars. Yeah. Now, the range of shuriken is two to three straight or diagonal line of sight. Okay. So if you're on a rooftop, you can obviously throw down. Yeah. Or you're on the road, you can throw across. Okay. But you can't throw over a rooftop. So if... And you can't throw it at me standing beside you. So I wouldn't be able to throw from here to here because Correct. there's a building between us. Yes. Correct. Okay. So I'll do the next turn, which is, okay, forward and diagonal or forward and sideways. So I'll do forward and diagonal because it takes me forward a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And move to there with that one. That's that action. Okay. And this one gets discarded. Now, what I must say and at I this stage is... to open another yeah. card earlier. What I need to say is, yep. on the sixth turn of our round, mm -hmm. your little ninja should be standing on a roof. 
or you get a penalty. Ooh. So try not to be standing on on the ground for the ground. too long. Okay. You can, if you actually take out a guard by moving into them with your ninja. Yeah. You will lose one movement round, so you will lose two cards. If you take them out with your shuriken, you don't lose any actions because okay. it's silent. Okay. And it's free. If you take the guard out on your last turn, yeah. By moving into them, you do not lose your action of the first turn, but because you're standing on the road hiding the body, you get a penalty. You get the penalty for standing on the road. Yes. I think I get it. So you know another card to draw then. Uh, well, I've drawn the card in the last round, and I'm going to draw this one. Mm. So, um, mm, I can move diagonal. Well, I'm going to move this one diagonal eh, to move on top of the rooftop. Yeah. So it doesn't bump me too much. And this is going to go away. And do that. Okay. Well, my actions are sideways two or <laughs> sideways and one left. Or one right. Not good. Really, because I hit the light if I go that way, and I hit the guard if I go that way. Uh -huh. So the only thing I can really do is jump over to here. Which isn't a very effective go-forward action, but at least it's safe. Okay. And I, I turn can, over my card, like you didn't that. do again. I do, oh, no. <laughs> and I bet things, I bet I'm, I'm, I can hear people shouting on the screen, Back off, for goodness sake, open your cards! Turn your card over. Yeah, damn it. So, Jordan, mad. back to two cards to choose from. And these two cards are the ones I have to choose from. So, I am the blue person. Ooh, okay. Here you the purple. I'm the purple human being. This is going to be mighty annoying because I can either come if I come if I go through a light, mm -hmm. do I get the light? You get to put it on your card, unfortunately. That's and then you act out what happens when the light is resolved. Not what I want to do. No. The I, other the other card may be better. But I'd still fall on No. No, yeah. you wouldn't. You'd be here. Okay, if I use let's let's show the one. let's let's show the humans. Yeah. <laughs> I can either come side and then diagonal. Yeah. Which means that I would end up here. Yeah. Right by the guard. Yeah. Or side and then diagonal, which I end up in light. Yeah. Or I can move one forward, which I stand on the light and then go onto a roof. Yeah. Or on the floor. Mm -hmm. So either way, this is messed up. The best move is to go here. The first option. Okay, I am trusting you. Yeah. Which it may prove to be a really bad idea. No. <laughs> but I don't know that yet. Okay, well let's look at these cards because this is interesting. Yeah. I've got a back card. You have a back. This yeah. is a back card. I put this in front of the camera. This mm -hmm. is a backwards card. Oh, do you have to go back? So it makes you go ah. back one. So you thought your cards were bad. Yeah. I have to who go backwards. Who designed this Or game? choose the other options. Yeah. Backwards cards when you're moving forwards are not useful. Okay. Because you're trying to go that way. Yeah. Backwards cards when you're trying to get on the nearest roof can be very useful. So you don't get penalized on your sixth turn. Okay. So you can go back. If you need to. So um. in this instance, no matter what I do here, if I go back, I'm going to get pain. I'm yes. going to get, it's going to be bad. If I go sideways, I hit a light, or two lights actually, or I hit one light. So in this case, I'm going to take the least painful, offensive way by mm -hmm. taking one light here, which in case you move sideways will help you in your next turn. So I will do that for turn five, but remember we now want to end up on top of a roof. Okay, so now it's uh, turn six. Mm-hmm. And I have finished my cards. And with my cards. Yeah. Yes! I can get treasure come but stand. Here, here and get a little treasure. And you're standing on the road on your second turn. I'm on the road. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to get a penalty. I am a very brave ninja that's not afraid of the ground. So my turn, last yeah. turn of this round, mm -hmm. I get sideways one, which is useless. And I've got left and forward two. I've got right and forward two. So in this instance, we're going to get two penalties because there's no way I can not Wait, 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 wait. Do you say we're road. going to get? We're going to get. I think you are going to get two penalties. No, no way, because we'll both be standing in a road. I have 
all of my cards oh, put me on a road. Right. But I'm only getting one penalty and you're getting one penalty. Yeah, so if I move this card yeah. left or right, yep. I will get a penalty there or a penalty there. Yep. If I use the other card, I go left one and forward two, yep. or right one, forward two, I'm standing on the road again. So, you know, the safe option probably for me is to design another game. That's it. I think <laughs> the, safe, the safe option for me is to go one, yep. one, two, yep. and use my throwing star to get rid of uh... to get rid of this little guard. Okay. So even though he doesn't move, he's now gone from us moving up that section of the board, which is good for us. Okay. He was having that. That's why he got. He got caught unawares and you were able to throw the shuriken at it. So at this point, what we do is we move the time tracker. Yep. This little alarm over here. We're going okay. to move it up six two. on the time tracker track. Okay. So our time tracker and level two of the game is, what, 20 is it? I think it is. Yep. Yeah. 20 says we're there. So in round one, we've got about halfway up the second board mm -hmm. and we've got the level six. So if you think about that again, you know, this board's a little bit longer in terms of you start there and you have a move to get on the board, but basically level two, we're maybe going to be here. Mm -hmm. Level three, eh, it'll be tight enough. So, okay. So that's the time tracker moved. Then we resolve our treasure. So you've got one treasure to resolve. I've got one treasure. So you get a treasure card. And I get a treasure card. Ooh, nice. And I have got play an extra card. And I've got a blowpipe. So this means on my turn, I can play two action, two movement cards. Just once or for the reason? Just on one turn, I can use two movement cards, okay. just that one turn and then discard it. And me, for one turn, I can blow somebody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can hit them with a blowpipe and kill them. And it it's, says in my free card. It says it's in a my free card. action. It's a free action. So we keep those to when we need them. Yeah. Then we have to deal with the lights. <laughs> you have to deal with lights. Leave me alone. Yes, <laughs> there's two lights, <laughs> and what happens is when there's two lights like this, for every mm -hmm. light you, you put out, yeah. you trigger another guard coming to find you. Mm. And what happens is the guards spawn mm -hmm. on the board in front of the players. So the board in front of us is this board. Yep. Now, if you're on the last board, yep. they'll spawn on the Shogun's Roof. Okay. So again, if you move into them, you can lose the game on the last tile because guards are there. That would be annoying. Very careful. Reckon. Okay. So don't 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 hit no, the guard or don't hit the lights. So what you do is you hold the meeple in the middle of the next board, about yeah. two inches above it, and you drop it. And where it lands, it sort of landed there. That's where you come. How high do you do you give them like that? Just 10? about this high. So about three inches. Yeah. Okay. And he is going over there. So you can now see this area, even though there's two treasures here, is quite congested. Mm. So risk and reward again. You may want these two treasures, but you've got to go through two guards and one light, or possibly three guards and two lights, to get anywhere near these treasures. Okay. So it makes it a little bit harder because we triggered the lights back here. Okay. Finally, what you've got to do is you've got to be penalised for standing on the road. So you must take an alarm card, because somebody saw you standing on the road. So okay. you get the top alarm card. And I get the next alarm card. Ah, mine is a geisha girl. Hmm, what does it mean? That's kind of good because it's one move backwards. So I step back into the shadows. So it only takes me back one, but I'm already penalized. So it's not too bad. It just moves me back one, which lessens the chance of me getting to the shogun on time. Okay. And so that's my that card play. I get this guy, which is a sleeping guard. guard. So you get away with standing on the road without any penalty to the alarm tracker. I just go around the guard and I do this. We could have got other cards like we disturbed a cat. Yep. And we here. stood on a board and yep. made a loud noise. We knocked a tile or slipped on a roof, which is pretty bad, plus two in the alarm. That's lucky, yes. And one of the worst ones of all is you meet a samurai and you lose one action movement. Ooh. So thankfully we didn't meet that a samurai and that's how the game plays. We've done okay so far. Shall we have another round? I, I want to have another round. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Well, the first player marker doesn't go to anybody just yet. Okay. Because after six turns, we've done the treasure, we've done the alarm. Yeah. What we do is we put our played cards with our discarded cards. Yep. And we give them to the next player clockwise. So I will give you mine. You will give yours over there. This person's will move over to here 
and this one will come to me. So the cards rotate, give them a good shuffle. What do we do with this alarm card that I... It's discarded. It's discarded. Okay. Shuffle them up. Okay. And the first player uh, token moves to me. Ninja! So I turn over one card, and I turn over another card. I'm ready to go. Raring to go, albeit back on the roof. Okay, do I draw a card now? Or? Yes. Just so you can plan your strategy. Okay. So for me, forward one, diagonal one's probably as good as it's going to get for me. Forward one. And I don't know. I'll go diagonal there. Because that's a bit scary with whatever with all the cards. So I play that card. And I will discard this card. And I will turn over another one. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. Yeah. On the sixth turn, on the basic level, the moving guards move. Okay. So, had I been there and moved one square back, you would I have would have interacted with the guard and lost a turn. Do all the guards? Only no, no. in the tile that we're going to be moving on to. Okay. However, if you went on to play this game at a higher level, yeah. after every two card single round you play, the guards move. move. Yes. So it ramps up. Yeah, I can see that. That would be slightly harder mm -hmm. okay so i can either according to the cards i have drawn i can either move sideways oops sideways one and then three further as in forward two, or two, two. two forward yeah. your pardon mm -hmm. or one sideways and one there yeah so that means that uh, since i presume we can be on the same spot yeah, but you could go there and go for this treasure. Now. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. So I'm going to do <laughs> that and that, which makes me a very brave, if probably foolish ninja. And now I am remembering to get another card. And this time I've got two cards Absolutely. that are like opposite each other. I've got sideways one and forward two, yep. or forward two and sideways one. So I Ooh. don't really want to go sideways at all, unfortunately. You can get a light. I don't want, you can I come don't here and you can a get light. a light. I don't want the light. That would be cool if you had a light. So I'm going to go, this is a bit worrying, I'm going to go sideways one and forward two. So I'm going right into the middle okay. of this area. The only thing is if I get a move two diagonal, I could steal that treasure on you, which would be kind of nice. Yeah, but you're not going to do that. No, I'll let you have it. Okay. Uh, so I am going to... Turn your card over. Dun, dun, dun. Rubbish. Yeah, but you could get the light and be close to the treasure. But I don't want to get the light. And you could, when you're there, you could take out a guard. You could like move to here. Yeah. Take out a guard who's in line of sight. He's standing on the roof, so you could probably see him with your shuriken. Yeah. And then move to the light. But it keeps you close to that, but it's a risky strategy. I don't think this guard could affect you as much. He's He's... He's the troublemaker one, which opens up this, maybe. If you get mm. to there, this opens up this. Yeah. But if you get to here, he's still blocking it. Okay. You have to, sometimes in the game, you actually have to think. I'm not keen on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to go and get the light. Yeah. So if you got a diagonal there, you could pick up two treasures okay. on your next turn. Or not, as the case may be, because yeah. I don't get the right card. Okay. Um, sideways one, diagonal one. That's bad. That means I hit a guard on a roof. Okay. Sideways one, forward two. That means I hit a light. <laughs> I don't have much choices here. Sideways one, diagonal one. Sideways diagonal's there. Diagonal one's there, forward there. So let's just do that. Take a chance to go close to the guards. Okay. I'm in the middle of two guards now, but I'm hoping I'll get a diagonal to escape that on my next card. Okay. And it's my turn. I drew this one before, which is jumping one, mm -hmm. which is not something I'm more particularly keen on. And backwards. And backwards. Mm -hmm. So jumping on the roof is your only option, unfortunately. Well, no, because I could jump backwards and kick that <laughs> guard's ass. And then lose a movement action. So I can only jump forward. Um, <laughs> well, it depends how challenging you want it to be. I don't want it to be very challenging at all. I'm a very, very cautious little ninja. A very passive ninja? Well, I'm, I don't like hurting people if I can help it. Okay. 
Unless so, I can hurt them really well. In my case, I sort of got lucky. I got a diagonal and I got a left or a right on straight on. So a diagonal there I can't do, even though I'd like the treasure, because the next move takes you off the board. Yep. So you must fully use your movement. Okay. So I, have, I can only go this way, which avoids the guards, which is good, and moves to here. So it means I miss three treasures, but I get past the guards. Okay. Um, I didn't draw the card before, but I'll draw that. <laughs> I am hold better. on a moment, hold on a moment. What? I'm also, because I have the ninja card, I'm going to play my second card, Ooh. which allows me to go left and then straight on and get the treasure. Oh yeah. Oh yes. And I thought it was going to be a cold pit. If, if I can help you with whatever I draw cold on treasure, pit. I will co-op with you. Okay, um, this is when I want to get a jump move, but I don't. No. A backwards card would be good. <laughs> you got a blowpipe as well as a shirt. I do. It's no good, do you know? Well, no, I don't see the point. Well, you could use him. He's three. You could kill him from where you are. But why would I want to kill him? Because you want to go forward and get one of these two treasures. Well, I understand, but I'm not going to do it right away because I can... Well, you can only do it when he's in range, three or two. So if you move too close, you can't do it. Um, so, yeah, well, no, with, with, I can blow him from a distance. Yeah, three or two. Yeah, exactly. So one, two, three. So you can do him now. I don't want to. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be cautious. Okay. I'm going to be cautious. Yeah, okay. I'm arguing with this side. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm not very good at our games. I lose them often. Um, I guess you wait until I play. <laughs> then you tell me how much you lose it. Okay, I am going to go... Um, here, diagonal. Ta da! Because now, if I get one backward, I can get this treasure. Oh, but if strategic. I get another two, then I might be able to get something else. So, okay, that's how I've it goes. got one diagonal, which is not really great. I've got forward and one diagonal, which takes me to the same place. So, six of one, half a dozen of the other. So, I will just go there. And now I'm coming up to my sixth turn, so I must make sure not to be standing on a road. You've done five, I'm gonna do five. Oh, for fifth fest. I've actually done six because I got a bonus card, but yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, this is ridiculous. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that kind of sucks. Okay, I'm going to come here. So one, one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to use this card. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that one. No, no, here. Okay. And I get a jump card. How convenient. <laughs> so I have a choice of going diagonal to here and staying yeah. on the rooftop, yeah. diagonal to here and landing in light, or jumping and getting a treasure. Oh, what will I do? Jumping, play evidently. Safe. Play safe and yes. stand on the roof. Yes, I think you should do that. No. <laughs> I'm taking the treasure. It's cooperatively. If I get something good, I'll share I know, it. but if it is cooperatively, why isn't there a mechanic so I can actually trade things with you and you can give me gifts? Well, I can use my treasure to help you if you're stuck. But I like don't you trust that you will. Pipe. Come on. You can use your blowpipe to shoot guards for me. Maybe. I can blow somebody for you. Who knows? Uh, the last, last, last card then? Yeah. Ta da! I don't know what that means. Yes! It means that I can actually go horizontal or yeah. diagonal like this. Get a treasure. And then. <laughs> yeah. <get> and <laughs> stand on the roof. And stand on the roof. Yeah. That, my friends, is ninja class. And the guards are going to move. The time tracker is going to move up to 6 to 12. And we're going to resolve. You've got a light to drop a meeple. Yep. So we'll drop it on the board in front of us. That was sort of there at the front edge, which is really bad. <laughs> Thanks for that one, Paco. You've got a treasure card to get. I do. So have a treasure card. Not that it means anything, because I haven't used this to blow anybody. Ooh. That's a good one. And I've got two treasure cards. Hey. Oh my. So I get an alarm down one for perfect hiding place, which is that one. And I get the alarm another one. That's very good. Bringing the alarm down is yeah, really it's possible. Yeah, a good idea, like that. I 
it gives us a little more time to get to the showroom. Okay. And the other one I got was a shuriken. So the one I used, the one off one is gone, but I now have another one. And, that's and you're on the floor. Oh, the penalty for being on the floor. I got this is cooperation. You know, I'm, I'm making sure that he's playing the game properly. That's how we cooperate. You can call me if you want to, but not on video. Uh, <laughs> so alarm cards. Okay. <laughs> oh, look, I stepped on a board. I lose one of my cards in my first movement action. This is not good. It's it's worse if the alarm tracker goes up, mm -hmm. but this still means whatever card comes, yeah. the first card that I draw, yeah. I don't get to use. I must play the second card. The only way out of that is a freeze action okay. when I lose that card because I can't move somewhere. Okay, I'm going to move it. Okay, so. fine. So now we, we go. You know what? What I'm, what I'm going to propose that we do that we finish playing the game. I'm going to speed up everything and yeah. then we show people how badly we've done. <laughs> <laughs> how how or horrifically bad we've lost on this game. Um, because that's fun, I'm guessing. So let's keep playing. And we lose because I give you the card <laughs> that got you the treasure. Yeah, one more tile I could have moved onto the roof. So if you want to give me that treasure, <laughs> we moved the tracker up six. And we lost the game by one because I was generous. Yeah. I yeah. did not lose the game. Yeah. I have enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank you. I. I don't like losing, but it is funny that we lost by one tile. Yeah, I, I actually have enjoyed that quite a lot. I, I have to say, for a cooperative game, I don't think there is enough player interaction to be fully cooperative. There no. is no means for us to swap treasures. There isn't really an awful lot of cards for us to be able to interact with each other. Like, you help me move, yeah. you know, just push me away or whatever it meant. Um, so I, I feel it needs a little bit more interactivity because even if we had more players i don't see how we could have cooperated other than not screwing each other no we we use the treasure cards to help each other so i take this card out so you can move past them and so on i think your weapons are very effective that way no they are they are really yeah i, I don't know I, I felt i wanted to be able to do more with you yeah you know help yeah. each other jump yeah. be able to swap the cards or yeah. something like that I, this I think is the basic yeah you know, kid with mummy type daddy type game family type idea but other than that i have to say i, I find it quite clever um the little mechanics and, and about moving i like the frustration mm. of not having the right card at the right time to do the right movement yeah. quite appealing yeah i'm, I'm you know maybe sometimes I'm, the luck's with you and sometimes it's like I, I like that little bit of luck mm. element to it, which is strong enough to have an impact on how yeah. the game plays, but it's not so strong that it drives the whole game. It's yeah. not just luck dependent. Yeah, yeah. You have you, you always have a minimum of two choices. Yeah. A minimum. You have a backspace or you have two jump cards. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you would have three or four choices and two cards. Unless, of course, you're me and you meet the samurai or, or whatever, the ones that I had I stood, stood on a, a broken board. So, to be fair, given the luck that my ninja piece had and, yeah. the, and the alarm card. That was annoying. You know, it, it, it could have been worse because yes. we still could have lost if the alarm tracker cards had come out. Mm -hmm. So either way, you know, we had a little bit of good luck. Some of the, the treasure cards were quite good. Yeah. And some of the alarm cards were you annoying. Know, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's the way it goes. I, I, wonder if, I, I wonder if you have actually thought about this one. I've just, you know, um, that's me. I just think about these things as I go along. Um, and I wonder if you have tried to actually, if, for instance, a, me a cooperation mechanic, mm. if you end up side by side on the board, yeah. you can swap one card if yeah. the movement you have yeah. would help me. So yeah. that I, I think that way will give a better, yeah. a much immersive cooperative mm -hmm. feel to it, I think. Yeah. But overall, I think this is actually a very successful game. Thank you. I quite, I, I, I have enjoyed this it's quite a bit. It's simple, it's challenging, yeah. you know, it's it's light. It's, it's, we've played it with children of eight years of age and mm -hmm. they've really loved it. It's it, And they, they show their mum what to do after like two rounds. And and that's that's what you want really, because we're trying yes. to bring the new younger audience into gaming. No, I, I like it. I like, it's, it's a shame though also. Um, I know that boards two, three and four can be 
interchange. interchange the out. Whereas these three, they must remain the way they yeah. are. Why, why did you do that way instead of having this separately so people could just swap them all yeah, except the samurai? It, it, I suppose it was ease of printing at that stage, you know, in terms of, you know, make it simple so people can learn the game, they're fixed. Uh, really, that's why we did it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if, if you wanted to, I mean, obviously you could print out your own little time yes. tracker and then you'd be at liberty to swap these two boards. Yep. So the only two boards you wouldn't be able to swap would be uh, the, the, first, beginning the, end, yes. the first and the end. But what you can also do is you can also take the time tracker boards, one or two of them out, mm -hmm. and you can have a reduced time tracker at the side. So you could have, instead of playing seven boards, you could play five boards yep. or whatever, that type to of thing. To make idea. a quicker game. Yes, that's something we did at gaming conventions. We played it less. We bring the, you know, your time tracker maybe down to, you know, fourteen or something. Okay. So it's a, it's you know a little bit shorter game. And I like the idea that you would be able to make new um, tiles for the game, make it, you know, new extensions, new, yeah, additions to the mm. game if in 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 the future. You know, with new ninjas with different abilities. I yeah. think it would also be very cool if each ninja had one particular ability we've got that you do we've got that in okay. the add-on rules okay so they, that's that's yeah. already been taken care of good i like that yeah it's in, it's in here so what does the add-on what does the game play differently because we play the kind of the basic uh, cooperative game how does the add-on play what what rules add to the whole thing well i mean first of all playing the story and um, we've played the cooperative one yep we in this case we didn't succeed in getting on the roof by one time. No, 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 oh, no, 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 lanterns and the guards off the board and yeah. the treasure push them all off and lift your ninjas off and then flip every board over for the dawn escape okay and the dawn escape is player versus player and the reason for that is that you want to claim the glory oh so you want exactly so you want to go back to the boss and say i did it i got the shogun so you turn that one over as well you'll see it flips over naturally to the back of it so basically if you can imagine you've come in through the front door yep and you're going out into the gardens at the back okay so if you flip it over you'll see cool it's a different part of the city it's out through the back of the shogun's gardens to the blue forest so this is the blue forest in amori and what you're trying to do with your ninjas now is you're trying to move through here yeah of course there's guards and there's treasure yeah but you're trying to get to the blue forest first yep and if you get there first you can say i killed the shogun and the other people are like well you know we were there yeah <laughs> but they would he didn't do it well then how come he's first and he said he did that's such a corporate way of looking at the ninja world you know, what, what, what is it google ninja or something so, <laughs> so so basically what happens then is the only thing changes other than the gameplay is yeah. that you will again start off with a shuriken mm -hmm. but the cards we played the alarm cards and the treasure cards are put away and the weapons cards are brought out which are these so you have throwing stars you have Nunchaka, you have Tonfa. Tonfa allows Ninja to swap positions. Right. So in other words, it's a competitive game. Yeah. So if I'm here and Paco is behind me and he plays as Tonfa, yeah. you have two choices on the weapons. You can either hit an opponent and knock them one tile in any direction. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, you can rotate the position so you can pull me back and get in front of me. Okay. That so that's a Tonfa idea. You yeah. also have ranged weapons like yeah. the arrows and the spears uh so you can throw them at your opponents and knock them into the water yeah or knock them into a guard which hazard throws them down mm -hmm. uh, you have a blowpipe basically the normal movement through the water is your movement ends on yeah. one movement turn so you can go through it slowly without making ripples but if you have one of these reeds mm -hmm. you can move through the water and inhibit it for that one turn okay so that's a kind of nice little mechanic we have water flasks and the reason for water flask is because one of the things in the game is a thing called a flaming arrow yeah and if a flaming arrow gets fired in front of you there's little tiles in the box and you will position the tile in front of the ninja okay like a little fire uh -huh. so the only way you can pass it is you pour said, some water on it okay or could you jump it well you could you might get your 
toes burnt, I suppose. I suppose that's a house rule. I can live with that. There also is a thing called a bird whistle. Uh And a bird whistle is good because if there's two guards quite close, like here for instance, it allows you to call one of the guards two tiles closer. So if I'm there and Paco jumped over me and left me sitting there, Mm -hmm. I could call that guard over. And then he has to lose a turn to hide the body. Oh, that's nasty. So it's quite a nasty little card. So various things like that. Grappling hook is a bit like the Tonfa, uh-huh. except you have a range of three. That's, oh, okay, so that could be pull, very cool. So you can one of your ninja opponents way back from the board. Yeah. And then last but not least is the aerial runway, which is kind of nice. So if, you know, a ninja's on top of a, a roof or whatever, they can, you know, aerial runway down over a guard or a tree or whatever is in mm-hmm. front of them without interacting with them. A bit like the jump card, but you use it from roof to roof okay. or from roof to floor. Uh, what you don't do is you don't use it from roof to tree. But like, like George of the Jungle. Okay. Yeah, that splat feeling in the middle of it all. <laughs> okay. So basically the treasure cards are now purple, mm-hmm. which is why we have the purple for the red, because we had them on the other side as green. Now we have purple to match the cards. So it's much to do with the symbols matching the cards as opposed to the colour of the cubes. Okay. So we didn't want green cubes and purple cards and red cubes. And it all yeah, a bit confusing. Bit confusing. Because yeah. we'd already used red for you know, there, the treasure. So. so that's the second version. Mm-hmm. And it's very much cool competitive and it's it can be played that people will try and get the person who's at the front mm-hmm. or what they also have is and I, I don't have them out of the box but I will bring them out of the box each player has three Wana cards which as far as I know was uh, in the Japanese version of Star Wars yeah when they shouted it's a trap it was Wana okay. so Wana cards are the little treasure card or the little trap cards which have on them a wasp's nest okay a tripwire and caltrops. So what happens is, because it's a sneaky ninja and you're doing these on your opponents, mm-hmm. you will be able to drop these on a tile that you're beside. So if your ninja is in front of my ninja on the board, and I'm coming behind you somewhere, you're coming behind me. Yeah. Say for instance, somewhere like a, I don't know where we're passing, let's say somewhere here, maybe there's a guard there or something making it difficult. If I'm in front of you, I can drop this in front. And you can't see what that is. So if you want to play your movement card and you think I'll take a chance, mm-hmm. you must reveal the trap and it's a tripwire. And that means that you will lose some of your cards from your hand. Okay. It's not a good card to have. Caltrops is you can't cross them. So you're sort of stuck. And then the wasp nest is it calls guards. Oh, okay. So it's not good either. So two guards, I think it calls. So each of the traps is kind of nasty. Now, as I said, some people will go on ahead and one player will try and shoot arrows ahead of them and slow them up and so on. Okay. But in the case of one game when I played it, one of the guys sort of got in the lead a little bit and I thought, well, the guy who's second will try and attack him Mm -hmm. and slow him down a bit. No, what they did is they laid their wana traps all across the board. Something like this. Okay. So it was a bit like me walking into a room in the dark with mouse traps on the floor. Okay. I hit like three Wana cards in like three turns. And I, I think I used the B word, you basketballs. <laughs> and I said, that, that was terrible. Why did you not stop him? And they said it was more fun to stop you at the back. I said, well, I didn't really enjoy it. And they went, well, we did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's a player versus player game. And yeah. if you want people to suffer and have a bit of fun at their you expense, can happen. you can make it happen. So that's the second version of the game. The third version of the game, which is the original version of the game, is on the cooperative side, which we play, first of all. Yep. Whereby you have a time, a timing device, and you have a certain time to play your six actions. Okay. Go, 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 go. This is why you always have a card ready, so when it comes around to your turn, you know I can just turn it over and I've got a variety of So you only have to think about one card One card time. turning over. That's yeah. how it plays. The final thing is what you talked about there was... Um, Wait a second. It would be pretty intense if you actually were able to take a look at all the cards at the same time, so you can choose any given card whenever it's more interesting for you. You could do, but the original version of the game was multi-option. Okay. And for us, it became a bit too pressurized for people. Okay. When you slim it down to multi-turn yeah. and simple options, it played much more efficiently. Yeah, but that's why I said it would be really intense because yeah, having oh, yes. to choose among all those different cars, I mean, that would be... Yeah. Well, we didn't, wow. we didn't do that. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be heavy. So, yeah, the, the, the time game, basically, I think it's in the back of the rule book somewhere, if I can even open it. 
the time game, the times for a two player game is one minute 30 to play six cards. Okay. Three player, two minutes, and four player, two minutes 30. We okay. have done these tests and we have beaten the game by playing the speed version on a number of occasions. Okay. But it is, you need to know quickly what you're going to do with a card that's sitting in front of you. If you don't, you turn over the other one, you will get people going, go, 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 go. And they're really like, trying to hurry you along and you know the more people try to hurry you along the, the harder it becomes the harder it becomes to make a decision absolutely yes so so that's what we did and then the final bit that you asked for yeah was this is a high level cooperative game okay. this is a high level rule supplement that we produced specially actually for Essen um, Don Escape I suppose I should show that up so Don Escape is normally uh, in the box which is this Don Escape mm -hmm. but this is a rule supplement for Don Escape optional cooperative rules okay so you get to play this side cooperatively mm -hmm. yep but you play against the game so in this version of the game the guards fight back as you rightly said each individual ninja has yep. an individual ability okay so the Kaiken can distract move a guard one tile in any direction mm -hmm. as a patrolling guard it will return to a starting tile in the next phase the Yari Arrows and spear hit range two, three, and four. Okay. So he's a bowman. Wow. He's got extra so it's, range. He re can reach really far. The female one, the Kanoshi, who I think is really cool, can run across the water like, you know, crouching dragon, hidden That's tiger, that pretty, type idea. Yeah, yeah. Or crouching dragon, the other way around. And the tune in can pass their discarded movement card to a ninja that is hiding a body I or having to like freeze. It. I like that. So this is the higher level cooperative that you sort of said yes. would be cool. That would make sense. What additionally it does is it gives you. The weapons cards, as you can see here, the bookie cards, as they're called. Mm -hmm. A simple table to keep open on the on the table when you're playing. If a ninja draws this card, it does this. If the guards drew them, they get to do this. Ooh, okay. So the guards, for instance, if they draw a water flask, add an extra guard in front of the ninja. Mm -hmm. So an extra guard will be dropped onto the table on the board. If an arrow comes over, they can use it to shoot a ninja. Mm -hmm. So they can use the weapons to attack us, which is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, this card is discarded, so they don't get to use the aerial runway. But they draw the the um, the reed for the water one. They move a guard one tile closer to a water area. A guard may enter the water to attack a ninja. So all of a sudden, the guards start attacking. So what this does is this opens up the game. That on the guards' turn, you the players decide what the guards do. That'll hurt you the most. Mm -hmm. And it actually says in the rules, no cheating. Don't make it easy for yourselves. Yeah. Or what you can decide to do is you can decide to make it a multiplayer game, a bit like Escape from Cold It's back in the day. Okay. One player can use the guard's actions. Mm -hmm. So after every turn, that play they, changes. Can, they can play the guards. Okay. No, that player can just play the guards. Oh, just the okay, sorry, your problem, yes. Yeah, okay. so they can play as the guards yeah. and try to stop the other players from escaping. That has to be pretty fun, actually. So it can I think be that would work really well. Cooperative, or it could be four player yeah. um, against the game, obviously, or it could be three player or four player or two player with a third person playing or a fifth person playing the guards against you okay. so you can actually the game can then play five players so if somebody says oh, you know oh, all right i'll be the guards that's pretty good <laughs> and they, they kind of get oh well I suppose i'll have to be the guards then ha <laughs> <Okay. laughs> evil laugh so yeah that's the way it plays and um in this game though what we do is we use the little lantern cubes yep. for wins and if you take six wins you lose and you can use your bookie cards for swapping and things with your okay cooperative as you demanded as you said yeah so that's all in it but if you take six wins that's it you die though the water flask is used as a healing potion can restore one wound so that's the high level cooperative that you suggested yes. would be really fun I think that would work really well indeed. I presume, the, I mean, this game is already about on, on sale without, people can find it without a problem. Yeah, find it on our website, of course. Okay, well, that's, <laughs> well, now you know where to get it. So, uh, I don't know, I think that this game will do really nicely as a, you know, quick, simple, easy game to play after lunch at Christmas or something like that. I, I think that would be very good. And, and the simple playing rules, I think for kids, mm. 10, Eight, eight, nine. Eight, eight and upwards have played it no problem. But we problem. play really well. Yeah. I, I think no, that's, that's quite a success. But mm -hmm. evidently you already know that now because you've seen us play the game. Yeah, and, and we uh, nearly did it. <laughs> we. Oh, gosh, Sorry, I, 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 Paco did it, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much indeed for being there. It's truly, truly appreciated. Thank you, David, for, for coming You're all welcome. the way from Belfast. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Anytime. Absolutely.
anytime. And uh, please remember to subscribe and let us know what you think about the game. We'd love to hear uh, what experiences you've had. And if you, I would like to know if you have actually done any kind of uh, rules, house rules to, to improve the game, your experience. It would be pretty cool to find out what you've done. So leave us a comment down there uh, in, in the comment section in the video channel. And please uh, subscribe if you haven't done so. Give us a thumbs up and tell the world that this video is here so they can take a look at it. So thank you once again for being there. But until the next time, I will talk to you very, very soon. Take care. Bye.